Today we're going to be talking about two pianos made by the company Aeolian and the first one we're going to be talking about as you can see there was a Chickering piano. Now when you look at the finish on this piano, as you can see it's in very nice condition, it's a dark kind of wood which isn't terribly popular today but it's a nice color and there's nothing really wrong with it and as you can see the finish itself is in really nice condition. So you'd look at that and you'd look at the tuning pins and you might look at the strings and the soundboard and go oh this is a relatively new piano. But what's funny is when you look at the harp of it, it honestly looks like it's from the 1920s or even earlier just because of simply how rough it is. Look at how rough the finish is here in the portholes and how bumpy it is over here in this area. This is something that was kind of going on during the 1970s with certain piano manufacturers. Uh, Mason and Hamlin during the same time, during the 1970s and I believe during the 80s as well, had really rough finished harps on them that made them look like they were much older than they really were, especially because during at that time Mason was using their much older style logo and they had the older design harp um, that would have been used uh, many years before those pianos were being made. Now I say that this piano is an, a is an Aeolian, even though it says Chickering on the, uh, the fallboard, and also if we look here on the soundboard, there's a giant logo of Chickering that we'll see. And as you can see here, it was owned by the Aeolian Corporation. Now back in the day, the Aeolian Corporation was a massive corporation that owned many different piano manufacturers, including, as you can see here, Chickering. They have a really nice uh, logo here on the soundboard. As you can see, the soundboard is in great condition, so the piano isn't that old. It is from the 70s, um, but and the strings are in... The strings are in uh, really good shape as well. If we look down here, we'll see a badge that says Made in America by Artisan Craftsman, or American Craftsman, I think it says. And um, you'll see this badge on the other Alien piano that we will take a look at as well. But before we take a look at the other Alien piano from this roughly the same time period, I'm going to play a little bit on this Chickering because Chickerings have been known uh, to have a really nice sound quality, and this one also has a very nice sound to it as well. Thank you. action on it is a little bit heavy but it works very well and there's an advantage to having a piano with a heavy action where if you practice on that piano and you get used to the way it feels and then you go out to perform on a piano that has a lighter action playing that piano will actually be much easier than if you had a piano with a light action and went out to perform on a piano that had a heavier action. Um, so that's just something that's kind of interesting about owning and practicing on a piano with a heavier action. There is an advantage to it. So overall this Chickering is a very nice piano and I like it a lot. So now let's go check out the other Aeolian piano which is rather interesting. So as a complete contrast, we go from playing on a baby parlor grand piano to playing on an upright piano. And uh, but what's interesting is that this piano was actually made in Nashville, Tennessee at this time, which is kind of cool. The brand that is on the fallboard here says Cranish and Bach Pianos since 1864, which is kind of interesting. And as you can see here, this wood that it's made out of is this kind of a blonde color. And if you look really closely, especially here, you'll see little black dots all over the... Uh, the wood, which is like they flipped paint or something at it. And this is something that they liked to do during the 1970s and 1980s with pianos and other furniture as well. Um, it's just kind of something interesting. We've had a couple of Baldwins that have had this exact type of wood. And when you see a piano with this type of wood, you can kind of look at it and go, oh, it was made during the 1970s or the 80s. It kind of really dates the piano. So let's uh, talk a little bit about this piano. Again, it's made by Aeolian, and you might notice it has a grand opening style lid. Um, some up, most uprights, they have hinges in the back, and you open the lid like this. For example, this uh, piano right here, it has that type of lid. You open it up like this. Most uprights are like that, but for, at some time, they figured that it would be kind of fancy to have a grand opening style lid, but sometimes that causes problems because if the lid is down, which I will do, it looks no different than a usual piano list. People might go, oh, it doesn't want to open, and they might break it or something like that. So if, you're, if your lid on a piano doesn't want to open, check to see if the hinges are back here or in the back, and that's uh, a quick little easy way to tell if it's grand opening or uh, open. So if we open this up here, it doesn't play that much, so I can open it up pretty high. Uh, we can see this gigantic decal here. Uh, over here we've got an Aeolian badge. Over here it says, I can't read it, it says U uni unitized? Unitized construction. I guess that was uh, 
their fancy term for some way they built the piano. Uh, Kranich and Bach, made by Aeolian, world's largest exclusive manufacturer of fine pianos. So that's kind of an interesting uh, little uh, slogan there. They have a practi pract Practiano pedal? They use all these weird words that are hard to read. A Practiano pedal, we'll look at that in a minute. It's their fancy term for a common upright piano feature. Uh, they're advertising their bridge. Uh, six full-size, full-length back posts. That seems like a bit more than usual pianos do, but maybe not. Um, Every Kranich and Bach plate is cast of heavy bell quality iron in the Aeolian foundry. And they talk about the, uh, the strings, the pin block, the action, and then again a warranty, and then also another decal about the Aeolian Corporation. And if you look right down here at the very end, we'll see that same Made in America by American Craftsman right there on top of the piano. If the camera will focus, there we almost had it. Ah, ah. There we go, now you can read it. And it's that same decal that was on the, uh, the spine of the uh, Chickering. Kranich and Bach logo, as you can see, again, with this uh, flower kind of logo, it's very rough. Uh, it's not very like smooth and detailed. Once again, camera's not focusing. There we go, now I can see it. Um, the, it's just kind of rough, and I guess that's what Aeolian harps were. If we look at the inside of the piano, you'll see it's in pretty good condition. Uh, the hammers are in good shape and uh, everything seems to be very nice and clean, which is nice. It's always good to see. And uh, let's fix that down there. That's something these like to do. This is their Practiano pedal, which we'll take a look at in just a second. Um, but that's the inside of the Kranish and, Kranish and Bach piano. So, all right, let's take a quick look at their Practiano pedal. Let's make sure that's in the right spot. It's not. Now it is. So, like many pianos, we have three pedals. The right pedal is basically always a damper pedal, but the middle one here is the Practiano pedal. So normally, if you don't press this pedal down, the piano sounds like this. But if you push it down, it becomes very, very mellow. And if you push it off to the left, that locks the pedal down, and it looks like it's broken, but it's supposed to be that way. And uh, that holds that um, little flap down in front of the hammers to make the piano very quiet. So even if you play it loudly, it's actually very quiet, and that allows you to practice quietly without bothering your neighbors, but you can play as if you were playing loud. This was uh, before um, people had keyboards, and so in order to play very quietly on a piano, they had this type of uh, system. It's been around since the turn of the century. It's a very old method. Aeolian, or Kranich and Bach, decided to give a uh, fancy name for it, and that is what it is. So I'm going to give you a quick little demonstration of the sound of this piano. I imagine that back in the day, this was a... Uh, it might be an entry-level Aeolian uh, model piano, um, but here's a demo of the sound. As you can see, it's your kind of an average, uh, maybe almost 40 inch upright piano, but I just thought it would be kind of a fun video to do a video on two Aeolian Corporation owned uh, piano companies, because I've never done that before and it's just kind of interesting. One final note I wanted to make about the piano is that this little decal here, if you have a bit of an imagination, kind of looks like a cat face, like these would be his ears and his eyes might be somewhere around here and his nose and his mouth, and so uh, it just kind of looks like a cat face, so it's kind of cute. So, hopefully you've enjoyed this video on the Kranish and Bach, as well as the Chickering uh, Aeolian-owned piano companies. Um, the kind of an interesting time during the piano business, and uh, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. If you found it interesting, you can go check out my channel. I've got lots of videos on pianos of all makes and models, and uh, if you want to subscribe, thank you very much, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye. And also, the store where I found these pianos will be in the link down in the description below, and the comments section, so if you're interested in uh, checking it out, you can go check that out.